leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated on April 4, 1968 at 6.10 p.m. by James Earl Ray while standing on the balcony of room 306 at the Lorry Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. King had come to Memphis to support striking sanitation workers. He was only 39 years old. This year, he would be gone longer than he walked on earth. Today on April 4th, 2008, we commemorate the 40th anniversary of his passing. Indeed made up of significant events which shape our future and outstanding leaders who influence our destiny. Martin Luther King's contributions to our history places him in this inimitable position. In his short life, Martin Luther King was instrumental in helping us realize and rectify those unspeakable flaws which were tarnishing the name of America. The events which took place in and around his life were earth-shattering, for they represented an Amer America which was hostile and quite different from America as we see it today. Pivotal figure in the civil rights movement. He was elected president of the Montgomery Improvement Association, the organization that was responsible for the sex successful Montgomery bus boycott from 1955 to 1956. It was, it lasted 381 days. In 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a massive march on Washington, D.C., where he delivered his own now famous I Have a Dream speech. The leader received a Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. King received numerous awards for his leadership in the civil rights mo movements. Among them, the Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize, which he received at age 35 in 1964. The MLK National Historic Site King's Boyhood Home, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and the King Center for Nonviolent Social Change are all within a short walk of each other in the sweet Auburn area of Atlanta, Georgia. Woo! Woo! Well, after riots across the country, uh, Atlanta Station, after riots across the country and a massive manhunt, James L. Ray was arrested and brought to trial for the assassination of Dr. King. On March 9, 1969, he entered a guilty plea and was sentenced to 90 years. He later recanted re 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 and said it was a government cons cons conspiracy. Dr. King's family believed him. Dr. King's funeral service was held April 9, 1968 at Ebenezer Baptist Church and on the campus of Morehouse College with the President of the United States proclaiming a day of mourning and flags being flown at Hashtag. We're almost finished. Lorraine Motel National Civil Rights Museum. Count Basie, Nat King Cole, Aretha Franklin, and many other famous people stayed at the the Ray Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. But on April 4th, 1968, it became known as the place where MLK was assassinated. Today, the Lorraine Motel houses the National Civil Rights Museum, which is to be the core location of the 40th anniversary celebrations. We all adopt the Martin Luther King Jr. because he showed us the way to mend those broken fences and move on in building this land rather than destroying it. 
He led campaign after campaign in the streets of America and on the governor's mansion, even the White House, in efforts to secure change. Today, black Americans have federal legislation which provides access to legal, I mean legal protection in the areas of public accommodations, housing, voting rights, schools, and transportation. These rights were not easily won nor readily accepted, but with the good will and conscience of the enormous spectrum of our society, both black and white said, move on. Thank you, Dr. King, for being the drum major who was able and ready to lead our nation to greater heights through love and peace. of Dr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was in Memphis, Tennessee, early April 1968, the evening before he gave the prophetic I've been in the mountaintop speech to the sanitation workers who were on strike. It was early evening on the 4th, and he and a few friends and aides were standing on the balcony discussing the meeting that night. Reverend Jesse Jackson was one of the people on that balcony of room 306 of the Lauren Hotel with Dr. King when the single shot rang out from the former Main Street roaming houses across Millbury Street. Martin Luther King was dead at age 39. James Hodge on location. We are here with all these wonderful young people. Again, give it up. James Hodge on location. And again, I'm telling you, I have just been enjoying myself talking about youth, how we inspire them. Thank God for mentors. Thank God for the mentees. As a mentor, what are you doing in your community? Are you a mentor? Are you a mentee? Are you just in the community? Well, listen, what are you doing to help the youth out in your community? We'll speak to Mrs. Uh, well, let everybody know your name. My name is Natalie Pyler. Okay, Natalie, let me ask you. How do you feel being a youth in Long Beach, uh, just in today's society, in 2008? I feel that we have a lot of opportunities. Martin Luther King has opened up a lot of doors for us, and we are given a better chance than what we would have been given before he had spoke about it with his dream. All right, so you feel that we have a greater amount of chances, and we thank him for his speeches and all his wonderful activism. Now, how do you feel, what do you feel the school district can do more uh, to make children feel more welcome? Uh, what can they do to improve the school district? I feel that they need to get more African-American teachers in there so we can learn more about where we came from and how we was brought up in our community, not just what we know about now, slavery and everything. We need to know more Right, changing the curriculum a little bit, getting more Afrocentric, uh, knowing where we have come from. It will help us thrust to where we are trying to get. Uh, David, who's also an officer with the MLK Youth Council, what do you want to say just about you know being a youth or anything about the school? What do you feel that they can do more? Because we know we have teachers looking. Uh, we know we have principals watching. What do you feel that we can do more as you are a leader uh, in our youth council and in the community? Um, I feel that our school is not giving us the proper education because they are sending more African Americans into special education. And the children need more than that, and they're smarter than that. But the schools don't think that we are capable of being in regular classes. And you know what? This is not the first time that we have heard this over and over again how it seems and it appears, it, it, you know, it, and it's real. It's, it, it used to happen so much where so many African-American and minority children were just pushed into special education classes. They told you they need, yes, some people do need more one-on-one. -on -one. Some people do need smaller classrooms. But you know what? So many parents was told that by a group of psychiatrists or the, the guidance counselor or the teachers. And you know what? Sometimes if you were not paying attention in the fifth grade, that means you're going to have a problem in the sixth grade. That don't mean you have a learning disability. That just means that you wasn't coming to, if you wasn't coming to school and you wasn't paying attention, well, you will have problems. That don't necessarily mean you have a learning disability. Some people do have learning disabilities. But like the young man said, we have to make sure our school districts, wherever they are, are not pushing minority children, especially African Americans, 
into special ed. I've heard it before where someone said that 